complete other side. Whoa, way to shoot the gap. So he had more success when he uh, had them when he motioned the receiver over to the opposite side. When he motioned him to the short side and hike, um, Oz was able to shoot the gap. Yeah, you he felt really comfortable on that first run. You can see he went back to the well a little too quickly. Oh yeah, Oz was able to make that quick adjustment. We're gonna see how he handles that passing game. And I look for Figgy to stay in this formation right here. He's one of the best passers that we have in our community. He recently switched his playbook. We'll see how comfortable he is. He switched from the vaunted Tampa Bay Buccaneers offensive uh, playbook to the community popularized meta, if you will, of Patriots, which features Bunch and Trips tight end. Now, if you got a chance to really look at that last play, you can see that Oz had absolutely no clue where Figgy was going on offense. Oh, yeah. Did you see his user, man? Oh, yeah. He was just spinning in a circle because yeah. he wasn't sure who to guard. Listen, he's going to need to make sure he remembers his tendencies, his patterns, and his progressions if he's going to look to take away anything manually. Yes, sir. I, I, okay, now he's going. He's flipping the play, which is a very popular uh, adjustment to make on the offensive end. You know, sometimes you allow, uh-oh, square wide open, X wide open. <laughs> Hard flat, motioned out the wheel route, a move popularized by another one of the goats, Skip Goat. He tends to run the verticals, motion out the wheel route, catch you in a hard flat, and it's six points. So I think Figgy better do a good job of sticking with that bunch formation. That's his bread and butter. Question for you, Reg, and feel free to chime in here in the chat, guys. What do you think is more important in today's Madden? having a good defensive scheme or play recognition and realizing what the other person's running on offense? I think it's a combination of both. I mean, right now, we're going to see all four people who have advanced, gone through the gauntlet, made it to the Philadelphia Club Series. They're all running the same defense, but it's going to come down to what is behind the defense. Again, you know, we just, we just saw a prime example of he allowed – uh, Slim, not selling. He allowed, he allowed Jay Oz, excuse me, to set up his defense, flip the play. Oz wasn't ready, and he had a hard flat on the left side, motioned out a wheel route, and now you're giving up seven points, a quick seven to a guy like Figgy. So you want to run a great defense, but you also want to adjust behind it. And Jay Oz, he needs to show some improvement, or Figgy can score at will. Is there any question his first play is about to be a run? I feel that every t first timer in that hot seat. Run the see, ball on the see. opening play. I got Oz throwing a pass here. Let's I got see. him running the ball and loving it. I got Oz throwing a pass. ID in the D tackle, running back on the right side. I got him throwing a pass, baby. I got him throwing a pick, too. And he should have ran the ball. God. What did I tell you? Oh. oh, God. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. It's better to be lucky than good. Yes, it is, It's man. better to be lucky than God good. Golly. Wow. This game sometimes, man. Sometimes Madden's good to you. Yes, Sometimes it is. it's not. Yes, it is. Oh, you hate to see that. You <laughs> work hard. Get your man in perfect position. Lurk him. Get the interception. And get stripped for six. <laughs> oh, you got to be kidding me. And you could definitely see the nerves on Oz on that one. He threw that right at Figgy. Oh, Figgy man. Figgy grabbed it. Oh, man. Madden players, we say, what is this game we're playing? But, hey, it, it, you love it when it's working for you. You hate it when it's going against you. What a way to start this game off. Now, the question is, can Figgy put that behind him, run his offense? Oh, wow. oh, God, look at this. Play. <laughs> and if Figgy could have got past him, it was nothing but daylight ahead. That could have been a quick six as well. Man. One thing we're going to look at, that is 27 cap user card Justin Reed. A lot of people recently with the cap increase going up to 850 from 800, they've opted to go with Justin Reed as their user because he's two points faster than Apke at 87 speed. But both cards have poor tackling. Oh, look at that route combo. That was sexy. Um, 
He's, he's still a poor tackler. So even though Oz is doing a great job shooting the gap and meeting, old, and meeting uh, Fournette in the backfield with the inside zone, his player is not able to just make the tackle. He better stop hit sticking, and he wants to go for an X tackle and just try to bring him down. Don't try to be a hero. Just make the play, and you, you fight for the next down. Because Fournette, like we saw last game, is capable of breaking that tackle and going in for a large game. There's strength in numbers when it comes to dealing with Fournette. Oh, yeah. Shout out to Skimbo. Drag, I see everybody in the chat. They're putting their two cents in. And fourth and four. Hey, we just talked Skimbo up. What's up, Skim? <laughs> the question is, does Figgy have a fourth and four play right now? He's a little on tilt because of that last pick that fourth turned into a touchdown. That was a turnover. Chad, I want you guys to pay attention to what he's doing. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Look at the patience. Look at the patience on the Pat sale. He waited for the receiver to clear the zone, hit him right over on the on the far side. He's going to have to do a better job adjusting. I would look to him to, you know, you got to put a cloud flat out there and hope and pray that it plays deep enough. One of the uh, – one of the toughest parts about our game is defending those deep crossing routes. It's like they get just deep enough over. Oh, uh oh, we got a wheel, deep wheel. Send your send the zone. Way to throw the ball away. Those crossing routes they get just over the cloud flats, but not quite. Like there's, the, it's really tough to adjust to them. The best thing you could do is rock an outside quarter and hope that your guy has the play rec and awareness to stop it, but. You're going to have to use it. Sometimes when there's uh, multiple crossing routes, you got to pick one and hope that your coverage holds up on the other side. And that's what I wanted to speak to. Once he committed to taking away that one, he needed to stick oh, with it because he wasn't going to be able to get back to any other coverage besides that Absolutely. user lurking. Figgy was already locked into that read. You were still getting pressure from your line. If he had just kept going five more yards, take that away, yep. he would have had to go back. He probably could have got a shed sack or something of that nature. Instead, he peels off, found himself in no man's yes, land. He did. Figgy, the savvy <laughs> veteran he is, completed the pass, moved the sticks, and now you're facing still playing defense. And it's hard to make a, an experienced Madden player make a wrong read on those two deep crossers. One of my favorite Madden players to watch, a guy who's had a ton of success here in the Philadelphia area, Dub Dot, he runs a play out of that Saints book where he has multiple, he has two posts or a post and a crosser, and it's like poetry in motion sitting there watching him dissect the defense because as soon as you guess wrong, it's over. You know, if you guess that he's going to throw it to the guy on the right, he'll, he'll throw it to the guy on the left and vice versa. He definitely makes you pay. Okay, we got trips tight in. We're motioning. Oh my goodness, motioning uh, triangle slot receiver over. And again, pay attention stream to where he's hiking the ball. You know, he's hiking the ball not between 69 and 68. He's hiking it when he crosses the running back over there to his right guard, right tackle. He's having his most effective runs when he allows that motion to go the whole way to the opposite side of the field. However, Jay Oz is doing a great job regardless of the motion blocking. He's still able to shoot that gap. Hey, Oz, my DMs are open. Let me know how you do that, baby. Well, we need to find out how is he going to get this stop right here. You don't want to give up seven. If there's any way he can hold the three, he's going to need to figure it out now. Oh, yeah. Well, the thing is, is here's where you're at your best. If a man's coming out in bunch at this part of the field, you should definitely be able to get your stop. But Vic's going to Vic. Keep a spy out there. Keep Vic in the pocket. Make him throw up some trash. And that's where we forget about Vic sometimes, and that's why you get him. When all else fails, yep. run, Vic, run. Exactly. He's been doing it forever, man. One of my favorite Maddens was the Madden. What year was that, chat? What year was Vic on the cover? 04. 04. Remember how impossible he was to defend? He Shout out to Sandman, realist, secret, everybody, icon, Woo! coast, everybody who was using Vic out there. They had him looking great. And the funny thing is, the formation of that year was bunch and shotgun trips. Absolutely. Tight end as well. It's back. It's back. Madden has a way of repeating itself. Yep, it all comes back in style. And bunch has been a strong formation now for. Uh, 
Since the beginning of time, it feels like. But as of late, you know, guy, bring him up again. Skimbo really popularized the formation. Now you see other guys who really are specialists in bunch. Some guys that come to mind are um, Ghost, Ghost Madden, uh, Joke. A lot of those EMB guys, they do a great job. Joe Rice has been doing a great job in bunch. Shout out um, to our Texans winner. I happen to be at that one. Absolutely, man. So it's a formation that, you know, like you just said, some of the older guys in the community, they did a great job of it. And then some of the young guys, they're putting their own spin on the formation. So it's good to see the Madden community evolving and the new guys kind of learning from some of the stuff that has been great uh, in the game for a number of years. And that's something that always makes me a little nervous when you turn something where you need one yard into a six-yard toss. Oh, yeah. But it's incredibly effective. Hey. Figgy was able to get in the end zone, and now the pressure's back on Oz. Fournette's going to Fournette. One thing I love to see right now from our defending champion, Figgy, is look at the poise on this young man, man. Like, I know personally, if I get a pick with Apke, I do a great job scorer. I get a user pick with Apke, and then I get stripped for six, I would probably be a, a wreck right now. Oh, I'm getting cheated. This guy hasn't said a word. He's just focused on the task at hand and trying to get a win. See, and that was the attitude I always had when it came down to it. When you know somebody got blatantly lucky with right. something in the game, right. especially early on, all you can do is chuckle and say, if that's how you plan on beating me, it's going to be a really long oh, day. Yeah. You just want to allow... Hopefully the game allows the better player to win. There's going to be a player or two where, you know, each player can go back and say, oh, that was a lucky play. But one of the beautiful things about five-minute quarters is I truly believe the better man will win, you know. So that was just one play, but it's not like an online game where it's only four minutes. If you get, you know, screwed over with in a four-minute game, at least with that extra minute, basically that's a whole nother quarter. By, by the time you add on the minute to each in each and every quarter, there's a lot of game left where you can still show that you are the better player. Now we switch it to the nickel normal defense. He's screaming off that left side. I like the switch up. You gotta, I was gonna say, you gotta like Figgy keeping Jay Oz off balance here, throwing different looks at him, not letting him get comfortable in his reads and progressions. Yeah. Um, that's the one knock on this particular formation. I really love the formation, but oh, good, nice wheel route out the backfield. We have a flat from circle, and we have a wheel route from the running back. And Very there's tough your boy. combination to to stop. And he finally went to Ricky. He's using 700 cat for a running back that's blocking every play. But Jay's my man. Good play. Good play I don't right understand there. that either. Man, what's the purpose of buying a Bentley if you're going to keep in the garage? Man. Great D. That was He's a great He's just move. getting yapped at. Bradley Chubb. And that's one of the things that uh, Figgy was talking about. It's all going to determine whether he sheds or not. Yeah. And right then and there, he definitely and did. The thing is with this tight, tight flex formation, it's a great formation. It looks good. The, the routes are sexy. you got crossing routes going all over the place. But look at the alignment, okay? The, the guys aren't on the line, meaning – if you go to hot route them to block, they're going to give you a hitch. So when a guy, a defender, is sending six and running around the middle of the field, cloud flats on the outside, you're basically hoping that you don't throw at his user as he's done two or three times. Aki all over his routes. Nice high ball to Calvin. Good play right there. So he's doing a good job. The chess match in this particular game stream is going to be how Jay Oz is able to throw the ball very quick but avoid Apke in the middle of the field. Now, one thing that's glitchy is as he switches the bunch, he has Odell Beckham at tight end. Getting lurked. Oh, drops a pick. And J.R. Oz, I don't understand why he went with the no huddle there and he was hurrying up. He yeah. needed to take his time, take his time and make that the last drive. Instead, he hurried up, rushed it. Now he finds himself in a fourth and four. He's got to take his Depending points. on what he does here, now you're going to give Figgy he has to take his points. another shot to put more points on the board. There's no way, man. If you th if you almost throw a pick on third down, and you have an opportunity to take your points on fourth, you take your points, you know. And if you almost throw a pick on second down, and now it's third down, players tend to run the ball. So that's just one of the universal things that happens during the course of Madden. Like right there, he's just got to be safe. Hey, I got bailed. He didn't get the pick. 
just be fortunate that you got points out of that drive. Now come back down here and try to get a stop on defense because this defense is looking pretty, pretty suspect right now. He's got to be able to adjust to this bunch. you got to prepare for bunch or you're going to be somebody's lunch this year in, in Madden community. Is that just a hunch? Hmm. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> Great job there, man. I guess Philly makes everybody want to rap. There you go. <laughs> it's Meek Mill season, baby. And speaking of which, there are levels to this. Uh-oh. And Figgy is showing him Woo! that truck, truck, drag. Right now, it looks like he might be playing on a different level. And he has his offense clicking on a different level. J. Oz had seven from the interception, fumble, taken back, and three Let's just say he got three with a short field and a, two good plays. Hey. If you're Figgy right now, you're thinking 21-10 going into the half, and if Oz gets a little sassy, he might be able to put up even more points. I'm telling you, one thing that you got to do, this is high-level Madden. I know a lot of people like to run bunch. Pay attention to what this young man Figgy's doing with his bunch. He's coming out. He's allowing Jay Oz to set up the world's most perfect, beautiful defense that's going to stop whatever's going on to the right side of the screen. Go ahead, set your defense up. And then he's flipping the play and quick hiking, and Jay Oz's defense is just all messed up. Here's, here's Vic. Oh, man, there goes a play that could have been stopped in the backfield, and Vic's able to get six. So one thing you want to do when you play guys who are using that particular scheme is sometimes you might just have to don't even set up any defense until they flip the play. If you get a guy who's a habitual uh, you know, play flipper, let him just run his regular play, and then once he flips, now you adjust. Because if you get caught over-adjusting, you're going to give up a touchdown like he did on that first drop. You better make sure you come out in a good base defense there then, you go. just in case you there get quick hiked. But, you know, you got to take your chances, and that's what I'm saying with situational play calling and looking at opponents' tendencies. If I notice that you – uh-oh. Come on. If I notice that you're constantly flipping the play before you actually execute, I got to prepare for, you know, you flipping the play. There's no point in setting up defense when you're going to flip the play on them. I found that interesting that Figgy took that time out there. He still had 52 seconds. He's already on the 34. He's been moving the ball with the greatest of ease. Look at him. I don't – unless he's thinking he can score quick enough where Jay Oz might try to get a little something, put something on the board, and you can stop him. Yeah, he definitely yeah. saw it. It might be fatigue-related, you know. Like, you just want your guys – Put him in the best possible situation to, to be effective. You can't you don't take want with any you. drops. Yeah, like these timeouts, I'd rather have my guys full strength. He's paying all the cap. Randy Moss, Shannon Sharp, 43 cap. He's got uh, Diggs, Stefan Diggs, 40 plus cap. <coughs> Odell Beckham. He wants these guys to be fully hydrated, ready to go out and execute. Oh, man, look at look at this. As soon as he catches it, he's spinning upfield, getting like a three-yard drag is now a 12-yard completion. Now, 18 seconds left. He still has a timeout. First and goal from the four. He has put himself in a beautiful position. He's managed the clock perfectly. And for all those out there, this is a prime lesson in clock management, ending the game, and playing that whole half all the way through. I expect him to see him put a receiver in motion. Oh, he didn't. Oh, he just feels comfortable running, you know, going hat on a hat and just running at uh, J. Oz's defense. A That's lot of players will, will motion block from that formation, and it's really tough to shoot the gap. Now 15 seconds. He has to understand here if you're J. Oz, just take the ball into the half. Right. Don't do anything extra. Don't try anything extra. Don't try at Hail Mary. Don't try a deep route, anything, because you don't want to get hit with your quarterback, fumble, scoop, score. You just don't want to put yourself in a worse position than you're already in now. I, I just see Figgy is just – he's just more prepared at this point. So – and I say that to say, look at what he's done on both sides of the ball. He's just completely adjusted – to everything that Jay Oz has done. Oz was doing a great job shooting the gap and his trips tight in, and he switched to bunch where he's been more effective. Oz was doing a good job against his uh, crossfire 3-3-5 odd, and he switched to nickel normal. He's just outplaying him at this point. Sometimes you have to have a secondary 
offensive or a secondary defensive formation, something you can go to when your first when your bread and butter is no longer working. If you're Noonan watching this game, you have to be a tad nervous. Uh oh. Ricky's going Ricky. He's gonna take a shot at the end zone, probably it seems. Hopefully he'll be smart enough to try to break something with Ricky. But if you're Noonan, you gotta be a little nervous watching this, seeing how well Figgy's playing on both sides of this ball. Truth be told, I'm not sure Oz should have scored this game. Right. Oz is gonna have to, uh, I, I truly believe he's gonna have to go to a different defensive formation. I think his best shot will be, he might have to pull, pull out, he might have to become a dollar general and you know run a little bit of dollar. But as we look at as he gets dissected on the defensive end, this is one of the things that we talked about. He's spending a ridiculous amount of cap with those four wide receivers and his corners. He has 20 cap uh, Ron Parker, and he has 19 cap Myrick on the outside. And facing a dynamic passer like uh, Figgy, I don't think you want to go to war with those as your primary corners. You can't. Can't. <laughs> So, you need to put points up on the board right now. Yeah. You'll take three, but you want seven, but you cannot come away with zero. There you go. You got to run the ball at this nickel normal, man. You got to run the ball at that nickel normal. You cannot allow a man to just uh, pick whether he wants to run shed D or pick whether he wants to scream at you. You got to give yourself a little bit of balance. Great call. Now, Oz needs to make sure that he doesn't get a little complacent right now. Continue to apply the pressure. Continue to get that. Yes. Mm -hmm. There you go. If he's not going to get out of it, if he's going to stay stubborn, That's then right. you keep doing it. If it's not broke, don't fix it. That's right. And look at him right now as he circles through all of his plays. He's trying to get uh, Ricky, who is bright orange to turn blue. And sometimes when you cycle through your plays, there's a little little mad tip. Um, the guys will turn back to, to uh, full strength. Oh, we got a read option. Good play. Interesting call. And he was one tackle away from yes, that being was. house music. Yes, he was. Wow. He's making good time, too. If he can go ahead and punch in and get seven. Uh-oh. Still leave over <clears throat> two minutes and change left in this quarter. Absolutely. He'll be right back be in, in this position. game. Hey, let's go. And Jay Oz, Jay, Jay Oz actually, or Figgy actually spent 383 uh, cap on his team. So he spent a, he spent a fair amount. He's His breakdown is 416 that he spent on offense. Wow. And 383 on defense. And the defense is showing up right there. It looks like we have, is that 20 cap Parker with an interception? He's just user picking this man at this point. He's just got to run the ball, man. Run the ball. When you're passing, it's, it's, it's looking tragic. Figgy has not changed his, <laughs> his look at all. He has no. been bobbing, He's chilling, enjoying yeah. himself. Relaxing. He can tell he feels comfortable in this game. He doesn't feel threatened at all. He's up two scores with the ball. Look for him to milk this clock, get some type of points, and really put this one away shortly. Yeah, that's it. I mean, you're looking at a champion. The guy's won before. He's doing it like he's done it before. That should be a pick. That's he a tough way drag. to make a living. Yeah, he threw that. that drag a little bit too early. But once again, that Justin Reed card that you guys swear by, 27 cap, he did make a play that Aki would make. If you're Jay Oz, this is your play. If you can keep him off, the, if you can keep him fourth and eight, fourth and seven, he might just punch you this ball. Nice post. Oh, my god! Wow. Goodness. And every now and then, Michael Vick yeah. will throw it in the bushes. Yep. Yep. And that's exactly what he did. Wow. That now, could have how potentially much respect been. Does Figgy have? How much respect does Figgy have for him? If Figgy has respect, he'll punt. If Figgy decides to go for it. Then you can t oh wow okay man that could have been a touchdown now Oz you're getting this ball back 
make the most of this situation. It's very rare. He got a stop that he wasn't able to capitalize on. You can't play a player as good as Figgy and not capitalize on those mistakes. And Figgy wanted me to make sure that I shouted out some of the buddies that he's been labbing with. He's been labbing and preparing for this uh, club series with um, some really talented players in our community, Manu, uh, Prodigy, and Blocky. He said he's been spending a lot of time with Blocky getting ready for this. And he also wanted me to shout out his Tia, his Tia homeboys, uh, Crown the King, Jag, Esco, AKG, Siwoo, Bob Marley, J2X, SD Dub, YB Fuego, Vax, and Roy. So shout out to everybody that's gotten, that's helped getting these guys prepared for this uh, performance. Oh, good, oh. good tackle, Sean Taylor. He was relying on that broken tackle instead of his stick work, instead of looking to go where the play was meant. He needs to get something going on offense. He needs to get something going immediately. Yeah, but he still has time. There's about seven minutes left in this game. We have a five-minute fourth quarter that still has yet to commence. Come on, man. You're, you have a wide-open drag. Trying to get it all back in one play. He didn't want to take the underneath, and he's going to pay for it. Again, Figgy's too good of a player to give him this many opportunities. Trailing by 11. J.I.'s got to cut it out with the Floyd Mayweather reads, baby. Come on, man. Look, <laughs> <laughs> you got to look at the full field. You know, okay. guys running wide open. So now we have to have a decision. Which one is worse, the Floyd Mayweather read or RG's infamous Stevie Wonder? Oh, man, it's close at this point. <laughs> it's close. That was beyond the Stevie. Oh, and there he has it. Moving the chains. He's going to let that clock run. Figgy just moving his offense down the field, taking his time, not rushing, just waiting, wanting, needing to increase this victory in this wow, lead. Look at and that. Fournette, it's just getting ugly at this point. It's just getting ugly at this point. Fournette's just doing the most. Yeah, you probably should have just let him score. Didn't like what he had there. Going to go ahead and yeah. switch it out. Now, I think he's potentially going to go up 18 right here. Yeah. If you're Oz, you have one fluke touchdown that you got on for a pick you threw that you took back and took to the house. And the other one was just oh. a field goal in the short field. Do you, do you still have anything in the tank? Do you, where do you try to get an offense to come back down 18? It's, it's time for Oz to start thinking about if he's getting Taco Bell or a cheesesteak on the way to the, to the crib, man. It's, if he doesn't tighten up right here, it could be, I think this thing is over. Speaking Piggy of cheesesteaks, once again, I'm here in Philly, and I have not had a cheesesteak yet. I will be having one before the day is over. I'm just trying to figure out from where and what type. Ooh. Got to go. I'm going to recommend chicken cheesesteak. That's what I love personally. And there's a lot of good options, actually, as we're right here in uh, North Philly. Oh, oh wow. man, look at Fournette. Can't, can't stop. Down. Won't stop. Just kept going. And there you have it, that 18-point lead. I see Joel CP in the stream. Shout out to Joel. One of the best players we have in the community are running this uh, tight flex offense. Maybe you can shoot a text over to Jay Oz, man. Shoot him a couple dots. Give him some pointers. It's a great recovery just in time to get bopped. <laughs> right. Yeah. So right. If, if you're Jay Oz now, you just – are you trying to do damage control? Are you yeah. still playing to win? Yeah, well, you score, and you make it a two-possession game. Stranger things have happened. 
Yeah, we'll ask the chat. Type one in the chat if you've ever come back from a large, large lead, you know, 18, 21 points in the second half. It's happened. Tell me if you've done that running Jay Oz's offense against no, Fiji's defense. No, no, though. no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm not saying it's going to happen. I'm saying it has happened. There we go. Okay. Get a spin. Oh. oh, man. If he could have found some kind of way to get right through there, we might have had a ball game. But he's going to need to. Oh, oh my God. goodness. You almost want to just take that one into the quarter, give him that play yeah, back. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, fourth quarter, guys. It's going to be an uphill battle, but he has three timeouts. He needs a quick score. He'll be down 11. Another maybe get a turnover. Score. Right, right. It then can another happen. quick score. You got to make that guy miss, man. Spin. I haven't really seen anything from Jay Oz to separate his stick work no. from the masses. If he's going to need to make people miss, yep. it's going to be with a spin <laughs> yes, sir. or something of that oh, nature. Shoot. He still hasn't been able to get into yeah, open listen. field. And as you see, Figgy's not allowing him. He knows he needs to pick up big chunks of yards at a time. And Figgy's not going to give him that time. He's not going to allow him the opportunity to go through those reads. All I, I, my vision isn't the best, but I think I just saw a B-gap. This Bradley Chubb is coming in screaming. Yep. Shout out to Figgy. That, that, he and put Figgy a little wrinkle on the, uh, on the nickel. You, you'll see my asterisk, Bradley Chubb. It's all about him. It's he all about it Chubb, him. yep. He spent the cap on him. That's about, a, I want to say, a 33 cap, Bradley Chubb. Oh. That's a tough way to make a living. Yeah, fourth and 24, he <laughs> threw an eight-yard pass, man. Come on, Oz. Now, Oz, my man, you know, this is a tough situation. He's playing the defending champ. Figgy's prepared. You know, this means a lot to him. He's chasing the big He's chasing the big show. He's already won Philly. He's ready to win a major. Um, you know, Oz just got caught up in, in the storm. But I'm sure he'll be back. Oz represents the... Uh, CFM part of the community. So like I've always said, there are people who can play this game all over, man. There's people in the CFM side that are very talented, people in Mutt, people in Salary, people in Draft Champs. You never know when you're going to play a, a, a dynamic player. Four minutes remaining in this fourth quarter, 18-point lead. Figgy looking at the third and 14, just trying to run it out. Take as much clock as he can. Oh, look at that dot. Oh, man. Oh, he's just showing dots for no reason now. Streak up the field. Caught him with an outside quarter on the left. You, I don't know. Shout out Oz. to mom and daddy Figgy here yeah, as well. Yeah, mama Fig, daddy Fig, they're they, here. They came out to support him all the way from Lancaster. It's funny because I don't know if you noticed, his mom had to actually walk out and leave. Because she said she gets too nervous watching him play. She gets herself all worked up. Oh, man. Well, I think she was able to watch most of this game because it's pretty much been uh, in the books. Honestly, I really think if I am uh, preparing to play Figgy, I'm not running 3-3-5 uh, three, three, odd. There, he just has the answer for it. You know, he's he's fully prepared. It seems like all four of these guys were fully prepared for 3-3-5 three, three, odd. They knew exactly what they were going to be facing. Yes. And that's where, that's where high-level Madden comes into play. It's a chess game. Yep. You need to have somebody, if they know what you're in, they know what your coverage is, they're too good. They know what's open. They know what routes beat that. And they know how to combat that. Once you're able to mix it up and make – your defenses look alike. They're not sure where the pressure is coming from. They're not sure how many you're sending. That's when you're going to be able to get them off their feet, and that's when you're going to be able to cause a little bit of confusion. Yeah, by switching to nickel normal, that gave I think that gave Oz just a, a lot of trouble. He wasn't prepared for that. 
and it really showed. And I would like to see Oz in the future, you know, set your lineup, your depth chart. If, you, if you're prepared to run 3-3-5 odd, you can also, through personnel changes, you can set your team up to run a pretty nice secondary formation like a dollar. And so I would have liked to see him try to put dollar on to slow Figgy down because 3-3-5, it, it just simply is not going to do it. It's not going to get the job done. This guy is too good. The loop is not coming in. The A gap isn't shedding. The guy on the edge isn't like it's, he just has the answer for it. So you got to run a different formation. But shout out to Oz for even making it this far. Figgy is just he's prepared. Yep. And again, you really have to tip your hat to him because he made it this far. He got himself all the way to the final four of the Philadelphia Club Championships. He shouldn't hang his head at all. Oh, man. And this is a when it rains, it pours situation. You know, wide open dot in the middle of the field. He gets the strip back. The strip that he got, he gave up a touchdown on. Now, we wouldn't be in Philly unless there was at least one game where somebody had to start yelling, throw the towel, throw the damn <laughs> throw the towel, <laughs> throw the towel. You can't win. <laughs> Throw the tent towel. Man. All right, well, as we get ready for the championship game, we are two minutes until the championship game. We're going to have Figgy versus ESG Noonan. We're going to have TIA versus ESG. And it's going to be a good one. This is going to be a good game. We have the vaunted Pat's playbook. Figgy looks good in Pat's book, and he, he doesn't even typically run this. Um, again, look, look where he motioned the motion block. But um, we have the Patriots book versus the Browns book. Noonan runs an offense that's not particularly popular. He runs a playbook that not a lot of people are used to seeing. He runs the Browns playbook. So I want to see how Figgy adjusts on the fly to the Browns playbook. 21 rushes, 92 yards, three touchdowns. That means he was able to dictate the pace of this entire game Absolutely. with Leonard Fournette. Yep. And we all know the worst feeling in Madden is when you can't stop the run, when you can't slow it down, you yeah. feel helpless. You start calling anything, anything, everything. You start overcompensating. You start sending more people than you normally would, yeah. and that opens up everything else, and now you're just completely off to I mean, this is a situation. He can't stop the run. He can't stop the pass either, you know. It's just – Sometimes you run into a guy who has your number. Madden tends to be a game of matchups. You know, anyone can go out there and, and get a win. You got to, you know, it seems like Figgy's play style, it's, it's the kryptonite to what Jay Oz is looking to do. So that, that just happens sometimes. And Jay Oz will learn from it, and he'll be a better player because of it. And Figgy's style actually might be the kryptonite to, to a lot. To here. a lot of people, yeah. Because he, he played really well. But He's moving on. Somewhere out there, someone might have the, the, the book bag for Figgy. You know, you just never know. You just play your best and prepare and try to be ready for each situation. All right. Well, we got another one in the books. And our final matchup is set. We're going to be looking at Noonan and Figgy. Again, we want to tip our hats to Jay Oz. He fought the good fight, just happened to run up against.